So, yeah, why am I gonna do this a little bit different? The reason I'm gonna be doing this a little bit different is I had something come in the post um, this week and uh, I'm quite excited by this because I've seen a lot of um, YouTubers with one of these. Uh, Gareth Denks, for instance, is the latest guy. Um, definitely Adam First Man Photography. This is the loop deck, as you can see there, the loop deck. So, what is a loop deck, you ask yourself? Well, it's something that I wasn't expecting to try and use. I don't even know how you get it out of the box. <laughs> In fact, it's nearly impossible to get out of the box. Yeah, it's, it's an item to use with Lightroom. Um, I do a lot of editing. They sent me this, I've not been paid for this. Uh, they sent me this and uh, I'm going to review it. It comes in a fantastic box, really quality looking item. And uh, I'm not gonna get it out, but that's the loop deck. I'm sure you've seen it before. Um, basically what it is, is a way of speeding up your workflow in Lightroom. Um, it's got little knobs and dials and twizzly twizzly bits. Um, and basically you twist the dials to adjust all your light, contrast, whites, blacks, exposure, clarity, you've got colors, you've got functional numbers, functional things, you've got temperature, saturation, everything's on there on a quick and easy control. So I'm gonna have a go at this later on today. Now this might be a two part video. It may end up, I just had some cars pull up in a car park. It might end up a two part video. Uh, I'm not sure yet, but if it does, I'll, uh, show you the editing in the second part uh, the first part is me trying to get up the top of this hill and uh, find a decent composition take a photograph and then we're going to edit it on this thing never used it before I have no idea how to use it not very good with instructions with being dyslexic I can't do a lot of reading and so it's going to be an interesting experience for you so that's the plan I'm gonna get my gear on get up this hill and have a look total adventure never been here before Shropshire reels, here we come. So, we are up the top of the hill. We are right on the top of one of the Shropshire hills. It's that funny name I mentioned earlier on about um, Cairn Caradon, Caradig Hill, something like that. I'm in the middle of um, the Shropshire. And I've got the Shropshire Plains, the Shropshire Hills all around me. I've got some lovely rain and storms over the back there coming towards me so I'm going to get absolutely drenched probably in the next half an hour um, I've been doing another vlog as well as well as the loop deck vlog so I've taken a couple of pictures while I've been coming up on this walk and this hike which you would have seen on a different video or you will see on a different video um, and I'll put the links somewhere around anyway but the loop deck I want to take one of these images back with me and I'm going to work on it and process it for you and uh, yeah, next time you see me, we'll be in my little office area uh, with this brand new funny loop deck thing plugged into the mid PC, Lightroom up and ready, and an image ready to go. I have no idea how to use it. I'm going to go, I'm going to actually play with it live with you for the first time, and that is Compton style, definitely. <laughs> right, somebody's got to get home. I got kids and grandkids to see. See you back in the office. Well, I'm back in my little office. I'm back in my little studio or whatever you want to call it. But it's not the day I promised you. Um, when I was up in the Shropshire Hills, mm. I did take some photographs, but I didn't think they were worth editing on the loop deck. I wanted to try and find something that was a little bit better. You have to excuse me. This is a couple of weeks since I took those photographs. <clears throat> I've got a bit of a sore throat, a little bit of a cold, so I'm just getting some, uh, some of this green, horrible, gungy drink stuff down me, a few vitamins. I actually quite like them. Right. So, yeah, where were we? We were on this. We were talking about this in the van, the loop deck. you see me open it. <clears throat> I'm now going to do this live for you uh, on screen. So I'm going to take this out of the box. I'm going to plug it in, I'm going to see what happens, and then we're going to try and use it to edit a photograph. Never, and this is a, a proper Compton promise, I've never had this out of the box, so I have no idea how to use it. Um, I've probably got to download, download some software as I plug it in and as I, I set it up. So what I'll do is as I have to download the software, I'll just put you on pause, 
go through the software, upload, and then come back on again straight away. So you can get a real true feel for what this is like. It hasn't even been out of the box. Um, excuse me, I've got some green juice around my lips. The image I'm going to edit is um, this one that you can see on the far screen. Uh, this is an image I took uh, last weekend. Um, I had a Saturday night out. We went to shoot the uh, comet that everyone's raving about, the uh, Neowise comet. We went to Jodrell Bank. There is a video. I've put a video together, or I'm, I'm going to put a video together. Um, I've done a basic edit on the images just to show on my Facebook what the images we got. This is a basic edit I had a play with. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit better. I'm going to improve the editing process before I put the video together, and that'll go out over the next couple of weeks. Um, once the comet's gone and everyone's forgotten about it, probably. Um, but I'm a little bit behind on my editing. So yeah, this is the image I'm going to going to process. Uh, I'm going to put it up next to the raw file in a moment just to show you what it looks like. So yeah, let's get this out of the box. Let's not do too much talking. Let's get some uh, time on the way. So we pull it out of the box. Um, out comes the USB. Let's move the box out of the way. <clears throat> so it's about the size of a keyboard, maybe slightly smaller than my keyboard. You're going to have to find a home for it. So we need to push the keyboard back and we're going to find a home for it. Oh look, I've knocked me little Lego people down. Mrs C's been knocked over, let's pick her back up again. There you go. Can't be having that and there's Mr O. Right, okay. So it fits in front of the keyboard on my desk quite well. Um, it's not overly sized that it's going to take up too much room. So it can be easily left here to edit programs and stuff like that or we can move it away and tuck it underneath out of the way. So we're going to plug the USB in and see what happens. And this is definitely first time, first go. So let's find a USB port. We plug it in, we can hear it popping. Uh, setting up, let's have a look, setting up the device. So it's going through a setup process, blah de blah de blah, um, and it should be doing what it's doing. So once that's set up, we will probably have to find a program and uh, get it to work. Let's just go on to Lightroom. We're in Lightroom now, and I'll flick it up on the screen for you. So let's just see if anything is happening. Let's go, uh, what we've got on here, brightness. We've got brightness, brightness, brightness button. Can't see it for looking, highlights, contrast, blah, 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 exposure. Let's just try that. Right, so nothing happens out of the box. You obviously got to do something to adjust your brightness. Um, so it's not actually linked to my computer at the moment. So I'm gonna switch you off. I'm gonna link it to the computer and then we'll start talking about what we're gonna do with it. Um, but there it is out of the box. It looks pretty swish. Uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, <laughs> let's see if I can get it to work. Right, so I'm just looking through the website at the moment and I found a download page. Uh, so we've got downloads for Mac, we've got downloads for Windows um, setup. Uh, I've just downloaded, just clicked on the 3.2.5. We've also got a Loop Deck general user guide, which is useless for me because I can't read too well, so I won't take it in. We've got Adobe Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, uh, Camera Raw, uh, user guides, more user guides for video software, Premiere Pro, which is what I use for video, so it might be worth me trying that out. Uh, got user guides for Lightroom Classic, Photoshop PC, uh, Premiere Pro CC, Loop Deck Original, so we've got plenty um, of software to download on the pages to, to learn what you're doing with it. So uh, yeah, that's handy. Right, so on the program, it's uh, as you can see there, it's now downloaded. So we've hit that, let's try that, extract all. And then that's extracting, let's have a look, it's extracting. Let's see if we can do this. We'll do this live, so hopefully uh, it'll take a lot of the process that you've got to do out of it and the scariness. Right, so we've now got the program up and running. Uh, just lost it now. 
uh, click to agree, install, so we'll see how long it takes to install. It's come up with a pop-up which I have to agree to, as you can see there, yes. The beauty of using two screens is they pop up on both screens, so uh, never an easy thing to do. It's installing, so it's going to take a little while to install. So while it's installing, I'm going to have a drink. So we're back. Um, while we're on a bit of a break, I have the instructions that were found in the box. Um, had a quick look at that. Uh, we've now got to um, go into uh, our menu. We're going to have to look for the program. The program's now all installed. Uh, loop Deck. So we click Loop Deck and uh, it should open up the Loop Deck program, I hope. Here we go. Loop Deck program is now open. Let's put that on full screen so I can see what I'm doing. And it's basically a layout, a complete layout of uh, what I've got it down here in front of me. Um, there are some basic instructions on here like the crop tool, pressing the control dial, develop module, which is this one. Uh, there's a virtual copy, so function, pressing function plus copy creates. I'm going to have to find where all these buttons are because I don't know where anything is. Uh, we've got uh, L1 to L3, these are control buttons, functional buttons that can be changed. Um, these are basic tools like uh, brush tools and stuff like that that's on them. They're down here. We've also got C1 to C6. So we've got, uh, where are we? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. They're customizable buttons, uh, enable you to enhance your workflow. There's lots of little bits on here that can be customized to your own. Uh, needs. Um, if we go back onto the screen, so you can see there we've got the custom one, custom two, custom three, custom four. So custom one, you click on that, and we've basically got to run down a list of things uh, to what you want to set them to. So custom one is pick and unpick. Custom two is reject and unreject. So we know what these buttons are going to do by checking out what they've already got on their basic settings. So let's close that. Let's have a look at L1. So we go on to the L buttons. We've got L1, we've got adjustment brush, radial filter, and gradual filter. So they're okay to leave on there for a moment. <clears throat> uh, we've got D1 and D2. We've got temperature and everything. So you've got all these controls on here. Uh, it tells you basically what they all do. Um, so if you're good at reading and good at taking it all in, I'm sure you'll uh, pick it up rather quickly. Um, I'm just going to have a quick play of it just to see how we get on with it. So, right, what do I need to do? We need to get back into Lightroom, don't we? So we are in Lightroom. Uh, I'm just gonna drag this image over. I'm just gonna show you the difference between these two images before we get started. Uh, I'm just gonna literally drag it onto the screen for you just so you can get a bit of an idea. Uh, if I drop that down, it should move over a little bit. And if I bring the photo back up, there we go. Right, so we've got the edited image, which I've done a basic edit on. I know there's a lot of noise in it and stuff like that. It's not a finished product. Um, and then we've got the raw file, which as you can see is a rather dark image. So I'll drag that back over there, put that back on the screen, open up my control panel again on the side. Right, we are now going to see if this loop deck actually does anything. So we're going to go to brightness, uh, exposure, and we are. We're twisting the dial on the exposure, and the exposure goes up and down, which is pretty cool. So, we're going to bring our exposure up and we'll make that as a start to see what we're doing. We are now going to have a little bit of contrast. So let's have a little bit of contrast, plus four, plus five, plus seven. That's really quite a fine detail. And I think if you press the button, it goes back to zero. Uh, you've only got to press it once and it goes back to zero, which is pretty cool. So let's have a little bit of contrast. We'll have a little bit of clarity, because we like a little bit of clarity just to make the uh, details punch a little bit. And we're going to have a bit of dehaze. Now, dehaze, I think, is on the D button. It is. It's on the D1 button, only because I read this and it had something down here about dehaze is set to D1 by default. 
which is fine. So we can keep that a little bit of dehaze. What that's doing is bringing the sky down a little bit and making the sky a little bit darker. Uh, saturation, temperature, vibrance. Let's go highlights down slightly and we'll have shadows up. And what the shadows are going to do is going to bring out the the bottom part of the image which is pretty cool so that acts all pretty fast you don't have to know once your muscle memory works in these fingers um, you'll be fine so we've got blacks we can add a we can bring our blacks up a little bit and we can bring our whites up a little bit and that just makes that image a little bit brighter uh, what I'm finding now though is, is it's a little bit tinted so I'm going to add a little bit of had I'm going to add a little bit of vibrance just because I like a little bit of vibrance and that's not bad so far and that's quite easy to do um, now I don't know how to do great uh, gradients on here, um, so I'm going to try. Let's press one L1. What does L1 do? L1 has taken me to an adjustment brush, which obviously you can't use on here, um, but you can on the mouse. Uh, let's try L2. L2 takes me to radio tool, and L3 takes me to gradients. Right. So if I was going to do a gradient with this, how would you do it? I do not know. Um, we've got an up and down, doesn't, oh it moved me through the images, let's go back to that one. So we don't want to use the arrow keys because that just moves you around. Um, so, we're on gradient, so I think you've then got to use your mouse um, to bring a gradient down. I want to bring a gradient down over the sky um, and then I'm going to set this up um, and see if this actually does anything on here. So, gradient shadows, yeah, gradient shadows are down, so we can bring the sky down a little bit bring the whites back up a bit more and we're going to add a little bit of saturation to the sky make it a little bit more deeper blue so once you've got your gradial tool set and you can move your gradient down once you've got your gradial tool set you can actually use these sliders then to adjust it um, we've got hue and saturation or you've got hue at the top which is highlighted um, so by taking the blue and rolling the blue down it actually removes the blue and changes the hue now if I press zero, press press it down, it goes back to zero. So luminosance on the blue, we can add a little bit of blue or reduce a little bit of blue. Not doing a lot, is it? So I'm gonna press it down and then the saturation. It's actually quite good. I think once you, um, let's just take that off. So you press L3 again and that takes your gradient back off. Let's try temperature. So we've got a temperature slider. Our temperature then we can warm it up, which is a no-no, and we can cool it down. Uh, when this photo was taken, it was actually taken with a nighttime filter, so it's, the colours were already quite nice anyway, but I quite like that cooler tone. Um, it just gives that a little bit more. Yeah, I just like that. And we've got tint, and the tint, I don't think we need the tint, so we'll press, we'll press the tint button again, it goes back to normal. That's actually quite an easy thing to use. In fact, it's it is once your muscle memory works and I've only basically scratched the surface and if I bring that other image over uh, yeah I've got a little bit more to do on it but if I bring the other image over now you can actually see that my basic rough edit um, compared to my full edit that I've just had a bit of a tinker with on the loop deck uh, the actual new one is better let's close that pop that back up for you yeah so the new edit this version here is a better color and a better version than this one there so in all fairness I would say that it's uh, quite a nice little piece of kit it's something you've got to get used to it's something you're gonna to have to play with something you have to you know pick it up and poke the buttons and see what they do and things like that but I think in all fairness the installation is very very quick very very easy the program in front of me you know up on the screen for customizing is brilliant um, you've got all the P buttons, you've got one, two, eight P buttons which can all be changed to different type of things. P1 at the moment is uh, Lacros, Lacros, Agape, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so you can obviously change all these P buttons to different things um, and it looks very easy. We've got Crop, go on to Crop, oh, I see that's the main, so we go on to Crop, we have to use the function buttons. That's interesting, let's see if, it's, if we can get this to Crop. So, customize mode, P modes, what does the P mode do now? Crop ratio one, I see. Right, so let's just close this. So if I was then to go back onto my screen um, and I press uh, P1, 
Do I get anything? Do I not get anything? P1? No. Oh, I've got to go into modes, haven't I? Custom mode. Custom mode. P1. Nothing. So, custom mode. Right. No, that changed the screen. Go back to the screen. I'm not sure. I will have to uh, play with the buttons. Function mode. No. Nope. Not quite sure how we get that to work. We've got spot removal. You can even do spot removal on here. Red eye reduction. Let's just bring this screen over so I can show you. Yeah, we've got... Uh, go into the custom mode here. We've got the main screen. We've got the crop screen. We've got custom modes. Uh, which I assume you would set the custom modes up, it's just staying as it is. So we can then go into the P modes, and this gives you these crop settings 1 to 1, 6 by 4, 10 by 8, you know, 16 by 9, and you can assign them, I assume, to different sizes, which is very, very good because I like to crop my images a little bit. Um, we've got spot removal. Again, it's it's got crop and paste. The crop and paste, as far as I know, the crop and paste will take any settings you've got. Uh, let's move it out of the way. Let's have a look. So if you go into copy, assign all copied settings. So if I then go into the next image and I press paste. It's done an automatic uh, copy and paste of the image I had before. So that would then just bring this. If I would just then always oh, go on to my exposure, I'll bring my exposure down a little bit on that one. Oh, too far, way, way, way too far, too quick. Bring the exposure down a little bit on that one, and that's probably not far off of being usable. Um, so, yeah, let's go back to the other image. Bring that screen back up. And again, there's there's lots and lots of things. Graduated filters. So you'd have to learn how to use the graduated filters. This uses all of these. Um, I just, I'm blown away with what it can do. Anyway, right, I'm not going to keep going. That's the image. Um, I just, just wanted to literally plug it in and try it out and see what I could do. And I've edited that image, image not too bad, um, for a first attempt. Once I've got used to it, it'll probably be pretty good. So yeah, thank you Loop Deck. Um, I will try it out a bit more and when I get used to using it, I'll do an official, just a, a review on this, just to show everybody else. Um, what it can do. But until next time, I'm going to log out now. I'm going to say goodbye. I've got things to do. I've got videos to edit and uh, process images. So I'm going to have a go at this, get used to it, get my muscle memory working, and uh, keep poking all the buttons and see what happens. So until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the other videos out on the location. And I'll see you soon. Ciao for now. I'm just going to switch back on for one thing. I just want to say one thing. Conclusion is that Compton, who doesn't do a lot of reading, can use this. All right, dyslexic, don't take in a lot of words very easy, don't take in a lot of text very easy. Without ever using this, without ever seeing this, without ever touching this before, I can actually use it. So the conclusion is, it works. Let's get better at it though, eh?